Hi everyone. Oh yes, I got 1K subscribers. Thank you for your support. I've been thinking what is the best way to improve my woodworking quality, and as you guys suggested, I finally decided to upgrade my shady woodworking setups. And I made this Moxon vise. It's actually a simple project, so I tried to make it the style I like. Let's see how I made it. Okay, I finally went to buy rough lumbers. I know some of you guys think why I chose mahogany for a vise. It's basically because they are already short at the lumber yard, and I could easily load them to my car without talking with an intimidating lumber yard man. I mean, when I was looking for lumber, I was wondering how I can ask them to chop a big board, or if I can ask about it to begin with. Then, I just found this mahogany. One board is actually thinner than I wanted, but I'm used to living with what's available, so I just went with them. Here's what I roughly dimensioned. It's my first time handling rough lumber, but thank you Home Depot. I've got some experience from their funky S4S lumber. But yeah, this board had cracks, so I filled them with epoxy. The epoxy I'm using is actually the one from 6 months ago, and I'm wondering how long is the shelf life of epoxy in general. It anyway solidified, so it seems to be okay. Now I chop the edge of the main board so I can clamp it on the table. It's nothing special, but I'm glad I'm experiencing cutting this thick wood for where I don't need accuracy. I can definitely feel the difference especially just from chiseling out 3 quarters versus this 2 inch thick wood. It's good practice for future projects. I kind of get used to controlling the edge of the chisel by the time I finish it, but still, I think I need more experience to control the chisel wall. Okay, here was where it took the longest time, which is to make jointing surface for the thinner mahogany and maple balls. First, I'm cutting the rabbit on maple, and it's a piece of cake. It's so satisfying to use this plane. Now is the evil mortise, but I'm with my new weapon, the Azebi Kiso. This can start cutting wood from the middle of the board, so it helps me making guidelines to chisel. Well, since my router plane base isn't wide enough, I decided to make two grooves and connect them later. I was trying few different methods to chiseling the board, but I still don't find a comfortable way for myself. Then, I finalized the depths by a router plane, and got rid of the middle part. It's almost done with the major fabrications, so I chamfered all the balls at this time. So far so good, but I forgot to tell you how I did the grain orientation for this vise. Look at the picture. In this way, I think the vise can keep good pressure when the board slightly warps over the ears, and I can easily fix the top surface flush. Then, I glued the board and let them dry for overnight. In the meantime, I cut 3 quarters threaded rod by a cheap hacksaw. If you watched my first video, you know this saw is where I started my woodworking with. Anyways, I wanted to get coarse threaded rod, but this rod is no more 10 threads per inch.
Moving on to making holes on the balls, there are some tips I want to share. First, if you don't have a drill press like me, it's always good to drill the board from both top and bottom with a skinny bit as a preparation. This helps you to make a straight hole and this hole also guides your boring bit to go straight down at the next step. When you use the boring bit, it's the same. You can drill it from both sides. This prevents the edge of the hole from tearing out. And when you want to do overlapping holes without the drill press, it's just hard if you go one by one all the way because the drill bit always tends to go where it has less resistance. So please be sure to alternate the holes to work with like how I do. Another tip to get a clean hole is, use a sharp bit. The bit I use is I think one of the cheapest one from Ryobi, but as long as you sharpen it, you saw how clean the holes I made are. This card sharpening thing is also the cheap one too. I don't remember what I got, but it's most likely under 20 dollars. After this, I made the mortars for the nuts and chamfer the edges. I then roughly made handles for the threaded rods. I will attach the rods to the handles by using epoxy glue. It's almost there, but I got leather for vice jaws. This is a bullhide leather and so thick. I really like the mahogany grain, but it's sad I have to give up. I used the hide glue and let it dry. Once it's dried, I trimmed it with a chisel and a hand plane. I actually waited for 12 hours, but it seemed like it was still tacky so I dried it overnight after this. Now, finishing the leather edges. This isn't the best way, but you can do it with wax and a lighter. First, just rub the wax on the edge. Since beeswax and carnauba wax I have is flakes, this is just a candle wax. Then, melt the wax by fire. But yeah, if you use the top part of the fire, the leather gets black, so just use the bottom part of the fire. Once it's settled, you can burnish it with the lighter body, and it looks good now. If you wonder how I did it for the holes, I melt the wax first, and rub it on the edge. Anyways, here's the final product. Now I can clamp lots of things. Before closing, please let me share my findings. First, it's good to use a coarse threaded rod, but if you are just setting it up on the bench and let it sit there, it doesn't really matter. But the bigger concern is the handle style. I mean my style, spinning the rod by the handle, versus the more popular style, the rod is fixed and spinning only the handle is a big difference. I did my style because I wanted to try this handle shape, but I recommend the handle spinning one for two reasons. It's obviously less effort to fasten the vice jaw. You only need a force to rotate the handle while you have to rotate the heavier rod that front vice sits on. Second, it will generate more friction and damage somewhere, and in this case, it will damage the holes over the course of years. It's not gonna happen sometime soon for normal use, but still, there is more risk as you move one of the heavy things in the device. Okay, I think that's it for today. Yes, I'm also planning to make a mini workbench maybe next, so if you are interested in it, Please stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. 
See you.